All right, what up guys, Pellet Plinker here, and we are back at it with another dieseling video. I uploaded one dieseling video where I showed you guys my little secret formula that I made. It's basically a combination of Vaseline and pellet gun oil, which works pretty well. Um, you have to kind of just like fill each individual pellet with it, which gets a little bit tedious after a while. But from that video, I got a lot of comments from you guys of various different methods of dieseling and uh, various different levels of results that you guys have gotten yourselves. And one of the best suggestions that I got that I actually tried out is uh, the WD-40 method. Uh, so anyways, what you're gonna want here is you're gonna want a tin to put them in because you might not want to diesel all of your pellets. But basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking a smaller tin. It doesn't have to be a smaller one, but you know, it can be any size tin. It's easier if it's a smaller one because you need less WD-40 that way. But essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some amounts of pellets, put them into the other one. Uh, honestly, the stuff in the big can might even work better, like the big like gallon can of this, so that you don't have to like spray it and make a mess. You can just kind of pour it in there. But essentially what you're doing is you're more or less gonna just fill this entire tin with WD-40. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna lightly squeeze the trigger just so that it kind of dribbles out onto all this stuff. And you don't really have to worry too much about coating it all, but you might as well try. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be filling this with like essentially like a shallow layer of WD-40 and that's just going to stay in here permanently so that whenever you want to use some diesel pellets you just open up your diesel tin. So yeah that's basically the only step you have to do. You put some pellets in the tin and fill it with some WD-40 and you're pretty much good to go. You might want to give it like a little bit of a shake maybe like spin it around that sort of thing but that's quite literally all you got to do for that one and you're done. It's really that simple. And I'll try to throw in some shots of, well, I guess some comparison shots. We will fill one of these with diesel pellets and one of them without diesel pellets and we will see how that goes. And uh, I guess one thing worth mentioning is that this is a really good method if you have something that does more than just one shot at a time. Because the entire tin is full of these diesel pellets, it makes it a lot easier to just kind of throw them all into like a little magazine like this. Um, the WD-40 actually sticks into the cups a lot more than you would think it does and it actually takes a lot less than you would think it does too. So both of those factors uh, definitely contribute to this being very handy as you don't need to have these disgustingly uh, goopy pellets going into your pellet gun. The other thing obviously too is that it coats the entire pellet not just the cup itself. So what this does is two things actually, oh, that one's full. It will not only lubricate the pellets as they go through the, uh, the barrel of the gun, providing it uh, a little bit of less resistance, which allows it to go a little bit faster, um, but the, the little bit of WD-40 on the edges will actually create a better seal against the barrel, which will lead to a little bit less leakage as far as the air, air pressure goes, right? Again, it really, really does not take much. And this this definitely works. I still do not have a chronograph, so you guys are just gonna have to deal with the fact that this isn't like a super scientific test, but I promise you the results are pretty fucking obvious. Especially when you're shooting the gun, like you will notice that you have to aim lower because your velocity is so high and the drop rate is not quite as severe. So you're, uh, whatever you have your, your scope dialed to or whatever, you're definitely gonna have to aim below that point because it's gonna shoot higher. Uh, but yeah, what, what you will notice when we start shooting these is that they definitely, um, they're not only louder, so you can actually hear the explosion from the dieseling. Not only that, but they, uh, they impact a lot fucking harder here and you will actually physically see that. So what we're gonna do is move this camera setup and see if I can't make this work. All right, so this is definitely not going to be the most scientific thing ever. But what we're gonna do is we are going to fire uh, I guess we could do all 10 shots of each one, but we're gonna fire the non-dieseled one first so you can see kind of what it's supposed to look like when we're just shooting normally. And then we'll do the dieseled ones and you guys can see and hear that it's a lot more powerful, a lot louder. You can absolutely hear the dieseling effect. And uh, yeah, we'll just uh, we'll just see how that goes. So I'm gonna go down range. It's uh, probably more than 50 feet. It's actually probably closer to like 60, maybe 70 feet, but no, nothing like too crazy as far as range goes. It's not like we're going like 100 yards or anything, but uh, it, it should be plenty to be able to see the results either way. So we'll just get to it, why not?
Again, definitely nowhere near a scientific test. But we of course did 10 of each. We did 10 non-diesel, then we did 10 diesel. And you can definitely tell that it swings a lot more with the diesel pellets than it does with the other pellets. And hopefully you can hear the difference too. Um, it is what it is. And also again, before anybody gets too worried, I do have a lot of trees and shrubbery in my yard. So the, the trees and the, uh, the bamboo specifically definitely, definitely stops the pellets. And then there is a tall wooden fence behind there too. So there literally is nothing to worry about here. Uh, if you can't shoot in your backyard, don't. I can, it is safe. I've made sure it's safe. And yeah, that's it. I gotta say that's a pretty good dieseling method. So all the people who suggested WD-40, I gotta say you were definitely right. <laughs> it's definitely a lot easier. I still kind of like my homemade mix because it is nice and uh, thick and goopy. So it definitely stays within the cup of the pellet a lot better and it's not going to evaporate away like uh, WD-40 kind of does. And there's also the fact that the uh, the thicker the oil, I think the more dieseling potential there is actually. So you can really fill that cup up with that Vaseline mixture. And so if you have a pellet gun that is powerful enough to completely diesel all of that fuel, you technically can get a better dieseling effect out of it. But uh, the fact that that was my, my less powerful rifle <laughs> and uh, it worked that well. I think I think that speaks for itself. Um, I am using one of those Gamo Swarm 22 caliber pellet guns, but this will work for the 177 caliber. It should work for pretty much any pellet gun that doesn't use CO2. As long as you're above, I want to say like five or 600 feet per second, you should have plenty of pressure to be able to diesel, whether it's 22 or 177. The only thing you can't do is diesel ball bearings you can't you know diesel a bb because there's nothing for it to like there's, there's nowhere for the the dieseling material to sit in it's a ball there's no cup to put it into and uh, as far as pressures go and stuff pressure is going to escape around a bb a lot easier than it's going to escape around a pellet but anyways that's it just wanted to show you guys the updated dieseling method because it does actually work really really well but uh yeah that's it for this video so hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you guys learned something and i'll see you guys in the next one hopefully and uh hopefully it won't take another like two years for this upload so uh yeah anyways that's it see you guys in the next one peace out